We used to chase dragons. Now we chase algorithms. And, uh, you know, since the dawn of consciousness, we've been driven by our curiosity. Now AI promises to answer all of our questions, make all of our dreams come true, and it's not even off to a bad start. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. AI generated worlds so immersive and intricate that they erase the lines of reality. Models that can compose symphonies and novels so rich and profound, they capture the essence of what it is to be human. All these creations will be lost like lines of code on a corrupted hard I can't. I didn't write this opening in my defense. I had one of my assistants do it. Um, they're AI, of course. <laughs> you didn't expect me to write this from scratch. I mean, that's what's wild, is that uh, 18 months ago, I would be writing all this stuff from scratch, and I wouldn't have any you know, virtual writer's room of assistants and great minds that are uh, in these LLMs to help me. Um, and that's how fast things change. That's how fast we change. Because the story of artificial intelligence isn't just about the rise of intelligent machines. It's about the transformation of humanity itself. And that story starts today. I'm an AI explorer, and I want to share my perspective, my journey, my concerns, and my hopes how we might navigate the future ahead. So let's wind the clocks back to November 30th, 2022. ChatGPT comes out. It pits the world like a juggernaut. You can feel it shake. And every other report on TV ends with the person saying, and this segment was written by ChatGPT. That got annoying fast. But designers and entrepreneurs could generate code to build the apps that they could never do before with the help of the LLMs. And throughout the land, you can almost hear a collective sigh of relief of high school students everywhere who have had to help me write this button. Boy, did we miss out. I think, like, I could have really used an algebra tutor, to be honest, and it would have never got sick of my questions. So all this stuff happens, and it's displacement. And at the time, I was working uh, at a startup. And as a copywriter, I thought, I should really learn this AI stuff. Two weeks after ChatGPT came out, I was let go of my job. And as an ex-copywriter, I thought, I should really learn this AI stuff. <laughs> so I did. I dove in head first and swam deep. And within four months, me and a co-founder released an app named Prompt Crafter. Uh, it was great. It uh, could do text generation. It was so fun to play this new tech. Uh, it also could do pictures. So it was multimodal. Multimodal, what's that? I don't want to bore you with the brilliant details, but uh, it could do pictures and text, one app. It was novel for the time. And uh, this is the first uh, image it actually created. <laughs> That's for sure going to end up in the annals of history. I just, I just feel it. Uh, so at the time, like, everyone's doing this, right? We're all jumping in. We're playing with the stuff. And, and I'm just one of millions of people that are playing with and pushing this technology every day. And that's great, but as we marvel at these wonders, we must also consider the cost. We must also consider how it's reshaping things. In Norse mythology, there's a story of Odin. You, know, you may have heard of his sons, Loki and Thor, but it, it all started with uh, Odin. And you know, he was just a man, and he, he wanted to know everything about the universe. And he heard that there was a guy out in the land of the giants named Amir. So he went and he, he sought him out. And he found the cave. And when he went in, he saw this old man with a white beard sitting in front of this great pool of water. And he asked him, I want to know everything, Amir. Teach me. What do I have to do? He says, you have to drink from the pool of water. But first, you must pay the price. And he said, what's that? Take out one of your eyes and place it in the pool. So Odin did. And he uh, put his eye and put it in the water and was floating up looking at him. And he drank from the, the pool and 
He gained all cosmic knowledge, and he saw farther with one eye than he ever did with two. And I think that is the story of humanity and AI right now. Except there's one big difference, is that we don't yet know the price. So, if you're paying attention, there's actually signs of what these price could be, of what the cost could be. Um, and I think it's emerging in three critical dimensions. Displacement is the first one. So what's displacement? Okay, people are gonna lose jobs and have to reskill. Um, I think it's the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, they predict that 40% of all jobs will be affected. That's a lot. Let's say they're wrong by half and it's only 20%. Still, look around. That means almost one of every four of us is gonna be unemployed or looking for work in the next 10 years. And it's not always obvious that AI bots are directly taking jobs. Sometimes it's more subversive. Uh, case in point, Tyler Perry, he has a, a huge film studio out in Atlanta, 12 sound stages, it's bigger than Warner Brothers, and uh, he was just about ready to pull the trigger on an $800 million expansion. And um, when he saw this new technology come out, it was a text-to-video engine named Sora, S-O-R-A. If you haven't seen it, put in your notes to go home tonight, watch the YouTube demo. It's about 10 minutes of a handful of clips, but it'll show you what he saw, which is, this is where the technology is now, and it almost looks Hollywood-level quality. If he wants to have a, a snowy cabin in the woods, he can just type it. But it's not just about all the jobs that were lost on the expansion. Think about all the food that'll never be served by craft services. All the carpenters and craftsmen that'll never raise a hammer or the grips or lighters, lighting people that will never bring in stuff. All those jobs are carved out with one decision because of one product. So I think that puts it in the perspective. Moving on to the next potential critical thing we have to worry about is weaponization. Now, we've already seen what disinformation campaigns can do uh, and divide us. And now there's voice cloning technology where you could think you're talking to a loved one, but it could be puppeteered by a criminal organization a cousin you haven't heard of from a long time, he calls you up, it sounds just like him. And it only takes about 30 seconds of recorded audio right now to clone a voice with pretty good accuracy. And it's not just the virtual dimensions of weaponization, it's also the physical. Right now, uh, the US Marine Corps is testing and training alongside robot dogs with armaments strapped to their back. That's no joke, it's really happening. And in uh, Southern California, there's a defense tech startup named Anduro. And they have this cool technology, or kind of scary, but it's called Lattice. And what Lattice does is, it corresponds with all of their hardware out in the field. So autonomous drones, submarines, surveillance towers, and soldiers with the equipment and the sensors they have. And it's able to ingest all these data streams in real time, and essentially play the battlefield like 3D chess. Have you noticed a pattern? Whatever this tech touches becomes more nimble, more intelligent, more efficient, all while accelerating its own self-development. So speed might be the most alarming out of all these dimensions, these critical dimensions, because it accelerates the first two. AI is going so fast, it's scalarious. I know, I had to create my own word to describe the velocity of this thing. It's really <laughs> that fast. <laughs> and let's look at the hardware. So on the hardware side, this is Moore's Law. Every two years, let's say the number of transistors on a chip will double. So that's not how AI works though. AI uses compute. So compute is graphic processing units. They're just stacked up in the cloud and they're doing heavy, heavy crunching, almost like Bitcoin mining, same thing, using that same technology but it's accelerating at a rate of 10x every six months since November when ChatGPT came out back in 2022. And if you've lived like most of us have through the Moore's Law phase, that's felt pretty fast, I think. But now we're on to phew, another whole level. It leaves Moore's Law in the dust. So we got displacement, weaponization, and speed. And it's not like trying to hit a moving target, it's like trying to aim at a blur.
Shit got heavy. <sighs> Let's go to my special place. <laughs> Let's all take a collective breath. One, two, three. All right, now let's talk solutions. I think the first thing is we need a global AI alignment council. So what does that look like? Um, well, the Atomic Energy Commission regulates nuclear energy. So we need something that's the same level and the same level of vigilance. Because I believe when AI gets smarter, it could be five years, five months, maybe 10 years. When it gets smarter, it's gonna be the equivalent of meeting an alien species. And we don't know how aliens think. So we need a global force that's funded, that's coordinated, and that's full of experts that are AI researchers that are pushing the bounds of trying to understand abstract threat theory because the way that this will attack us, if it does, we won't understand it. That's how high level it is. It might take us years to see the long game it's playing, so we need to have a body of people that are coordinated and informed, the best minds in the world working to protect us, watchers on the wall. That's one solution. The next one is high. High. Human Investment <laughs> Initiative. So there's gonna be a big displacement, a lot of jobs going away. What are we gonna do? I think we need to invest in ourselves like never before. Singapore's already taken the lead on this, and their prime minister has agreed to put a billion dollars behind their reskilling program. If you're 40 or above, then you can get a free ride and go back to school. And they're doing this cool thing where they're mixing the cohorts. They want old and young working together. The wisdom and experience, life experience of the older people working next to the fearless embracement tech of the young, which would create a dynamic workforce. And we need to do the same thing. The Department of Defense, their budget is bloated and it's unfocused. Why not peel off like 100 billion a year to reinvest in ourselves? Because if 40% uh, of the population being unemployed or displaced is it a national security concern? I don't know what is. So these threats are out there, but we have solutions. There's things we can do. The good news is the World Economic Forum says there's 97 million new jobs coming. So that's cool. And that's gonna help us get started just by 2025, to be clear. So that's happening right now. But that's even more reason why we need to reskill and get people back into the workforce and get them reskilled right now. So let's invest in them. And I think this signals a really positive movement, those 97 million job figure, because we're about to enter the most abundant time in human history. There will be money for reskilling, there will be money for oversight, there will be medical breakthroughs that can extend our lives by decades more. And things are going to get wonderfully weird. You want to write and direct your own tentpole Hollywood movie? Type the words. You want to talk to animals? Would you like that to be a voice or chat? You want to download your dream from last night and play it like a video game? Grab the controller. We're about to enter one of the most fun, amazing, creative periods we've ever seen. But we can't let AI become everything. And in fact, I think we have a big job to do. It's on us to unplug, to connect. As great as these tools are, we can't fall into the same traps we have before. We can't let this amazing tech divide us like social media has to push us apart. We each have a personal responsibility and how we act and how we incorporate this technology into our own lives. So be ruthless on how you set your boundaries. Because the one thing we cannot do is let this technology drive us further apart from where we are right now. I actually believe it has the power to bring us together like never before. 
Because we have a responsibility to not forget the most important technology, the most ancient and sacred technology, and that is human connection.